one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Fax number three one zero eight five four forty four fifty five. Dr. Drew is a board-certified physician and an addiction medicine specialist. Eric Dane is our guest tonight. He is uh, plays Dr. Wyatt Cooper from Gideon's Crossing. Monday nights, that would be uh, tonight, right, Drew? That would be tonight. Yeah, that's yeah. good radio there. 10 o'clock, uh, ABC. The show looks good. I've never seen it. I'm always here Monday nights at uh, 10 o'clock. Although, Drew, you're oftentimes not here Monday oftentimes, nights at 10. Yes. So are you home watching Gideon's Crossing? And, of course, you have a TiVo and things. What's your excuse these days? That is true. I did purchase a TiVo, but mm -hmm. I, I thought it was described to me as a magic box that I could just will to show the programming that I wanted to watch, <laughs> which it would include Gideon's Crossing. As it turns out, it takes uh, some hooking up. You hook it up, but once it's hooked up, you just will it to work. I know, but I've not hooked it up yet. Oh, you got to have one of the people guys come down. It's sat on my stereo rack for uh, now coming on month number nine. Yeah, seriously, once you get hooked on TiVo, there ain't no getting off that. Yeah. Really, it's well, bad. I think, I'm, I think I know that in the back of my mind, but uh, let's, uh, let's focus on uh, Eric and uh, Gideon's Crossing. This is actually the, uh, the second night. The second Monday night that it airs. Start on, on a Wednesday, so you guys have no excuses. But now we're still covered because uh, we we're work, here. Uh, oh, you're here on nights. Wednesdays yeah. too? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good cover. I never thought I'd be happy to be here on a Wednesday night, but yeah. So uh, we are covered. And uh, how's the show doing? I see the commercials, <laughs> and the, the reviews, everything looks good. Yeah, it's critically acclaimed. Yeah. Well, that's good. Uh, it, it takes a while to build an audience. Yeah. And, you know, as, as you guys probably know that, you know, if there's network support, then a show will have enough time to build that. If not, you know, a lot of good shows get lost in the shuffle. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 there does seem to be a, a little bit of a god when it comes to good programming, though. I mean, it does seem like one's shows that are good eventually make it and the word gets out and they find their following i mean there's been a uh, there's a long list of shows none of which come to mind <laughs> uh, cagney and lacy little little letter writing campaign got that show back on the Is air i think yeah after the first or second season or something mm. and it went on to enjoy another no you're X right. amount you're of right, seasons man. There, there are shows that have been you know not even breaking to the top hundred for the first season and for whatever reason the network supports them and, uh, you know, uh, audience follows, ratings follows, and the show becomes a success. Yeah. Just but they take a big hit financially to keep a show on the air that doesn't have strong ratings. Well, in a, in a show like Gideon's Crossing, it's like, it's like making a movie every week, isn't it? It is. I mean, it's... Uh, lean up on the mic a little, uh, please. You the... Uh, the uh, I mean, it's it's a film that's an hour long. It's it's got a big cast. I mean, it it just. I mean, it must be a few million bucks a week just to. It's keep, a, I put think the thing it's a couple million a week. They actually, they 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 aired the pilot uninterrupted. Huh. Wow. Like commercials. Wow. Yeah. It, it, conversely, when I got home last night because the TiVo was not hooked up, I watched an entire uh, E True Hollywood Story on the Dukes of Hazard. No. Yes. We were just we were just at a party with. Uh, that's Barbara. We with Barbara Bach and who's Barbara, Barbara Bach? Uh, what excuse is she me, Catherine Bach. But you're Catherine Bach. Is that, that Daisy Duke? Daisy yeah. Duke. I love her. Yeah, we, you might not be quite as smitten maybe with not her, now, uh, but when days. I was twelve, she was the best thing in the well, world. Well, then you could just close your eyes right? and start drinking, <laughs> but uh, or both. But uh, the point is, is this show was like in the top ten and number one for a while, and the network always hated it, and rightfully so. But <laughs> I mean. If you do watch one of those episodes, it was on CBS too. I mean, you got to be kind of humiliated to have a show like that on your it's timing. Rotation. It was timing. The the, the the American public was ready for a show like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, so we're hoping that uh, they're uh, ready for Gideon's Cross. Yeah, me too. All right. So uh, let's uh, hop on the phones and uh, speak to uh, Jamie, who's uh, 15 years old. Jamie. Hello. Yeah. What's going on there, Jamie? In a stream. Huh? You in a koi pond? She's in a bathtub. No, I was washing my face, and I had my little brother hold the phone for me. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, What's going on, Jamie? Um, I, like, think about sex 24-7. Mm -hmm. You're I 15. I can't stop thinking about it. Yeah. I mean, it's, like, starting to interfere with my life. Could you, uh, could you send your little brother out of the bathroom before you completely <laughs> demasculate him? <laughs> He's gone. Oh, he's gone. Good. And I'm not in the bathroom anymore. I see. Now she is out on the stream. I see. Uh, Jamie, I am not. Are, are, there, are you sexually compulsive, or do you think it's just part of normal development? 
I don't know. I hey, were you sexually abused when you were growing up? No, I never was. But, I mean, I've just had a thing. That I lost my virginity when I was I barely 13. And ever since then, I don't know, I've had this thing with it. Like, if I don't do it for a while, I just get really, like... I don't know how to explain it. Like I swear to God, there's no there's no sort of clinical evidence for that yet, this that I have come across yet. But I think kids that get sort of aroused, you know, sexually sort of programmed at a young age, it it sets some motion going. You know, like yeah. these arousal mechanisms just get going and pow, they're they're off and running. Well, I mean, would violence be any different? You know what I mean? I mean, why not? If they got into violent, would they perpetuate some violence with them? Yeah, That's a great I mean, question. I, I think it would be the same. You think? I, well, I mean, if you took a 12 or 13-year-old boy, especially, let's yeah. say, and you're violent with him or showed him a lot of violence. He'd still be like, oh, let's just think of, take, take any other animal. Any other animal. Yeah. You're yeah. violent with them at th 12 or 13. They would yeah. probably be Continue. a more violent 15-year-old than one that wasn't more, more exposed to it. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right. So sexual, probably same. the same thing. Yeah. All right, Jamie, that's it. Your statistic. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're going to get uterine cancer in about six months. You'll uh, pop out a few kids and call it a life. You're done. You know what? Sorry, I baby. I like you, but you're making me very upset right now. You're very precocious, you uh, youngin. I'm are trying you, to find out what's wrong with me. Are you able to contain these behaviors, or do you keep having sex? Well, I mean, I try not to, but it's hard not to. Same guy? No. Different wow. Mm, same, team. but they're on the same team, at least. Right? Are you at least safe about it? Well, yeah. Okay. okay. Condom? I'm not gonna like you know go out. I haven't had sex with that many guys, but okay, only, right. about, only about four. Right. Well, well, you're 15. The list could be long, but uh, it yeah. could be longer. Well, don't worry. Okay, you can still add up it pretty could, good. It could be worse. Hey, uh, Jamie. Yeah. How about you just find yourself one guy mm -hmm. who, uh, you know, you fall in love with, and you guys have a nice little high school relationship, and you have all the sex you want. Okay, sounds good. Is that all right? All right. All right. Can you do well, that? Are yeah. you, is your model of relationships stable relationships? No, no, not really. I have yeah. like really. I just get involved with these guys. Mm, yeah, but how about your family? My family? Mm. Oh no, That's no, all crashing down. Yeah, I'm see. Yeah, they mess. Uh, yeah. Where's your dad? My dad. I live with my dad. All right. How's he doing? He's a really good dad. Uh oh. He tries. But wait a minute. That means mom's a Where's total mom? disaster. Yeah. Mom. Where's mom? Mom's um kind of distant she's she, far she lives far away from me and i just got my relationship back with her why i, I never really knew her when i was growing. why 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 she decided that she needed to find herself and that just didn't involve me or my brothers all right yes she's a like, drug addict um no she never did drugs but well when she was younger she did but she was just always really flighty i don't know how to explain it she's just kind of a crazy artist all right mm. yeah that's drugs jamie mm-hmm all right, listen, you have these, these uh, you're compelled to act out. You don't have to act out. You understand what's going on? Yeah. God knows I wanted sex in high school. You didn't see me off having sex <laughs> through high school or my adult years. Yeah. Still. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, okay. yes. All right, Jamie. All right. All right. Just find a guy and settle, settle yeah, in. You'll okay? be happier in a relationship. Uh, don't get pregnant. All right, Adam, I love you. All right, good. I'm glad we're back. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we talk about this all the time. If a woman, especially a, 50, a cute 15-year-old, wants to have sex, she will have sex. No problem. No problem. And we talk, we've talked about this uh, way more than once, which is it's one thing to say, listen, I'm not going to do any more coke. But it's another thing to go to a party every weekend where there's a big pile of coke and say you're not going to do coke. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when you're an attractive 15-year-old girl in this day and age, With some momentum. you're at a party every weekend. I mean, there are guys hitting on you left and right constantly. You know that all you have to do is walk across the party and start talking to some guy. And if you want to have sex with him, he will be there to have sex with you. I mean, you're asking them to govern themselves. But it's not quite the same as someone who was more like us, maybe in high school, who couldn't get any. You know, or just any <laughs> how, guy. How dare you? <laughs> well, all right, all right. I mean, any guy who would have to initiate. Don't look at Eric. Yeah, no, sorry. Just, no, I know. Eric got, a lot, Eric got a lot of tail in high school. But what I'm saying is, is <clears throat> there's a big difference between turning something down and initiating it. I mean, I'll, I'll do fine in life without initiating stuff. I won't do anything. But if somebody came up to me and said, how about I give you a BJ, the answer would always be yes. True? You know, you found that out when we were traveling. 
I only said it to you once, though. Uh, that's what I mean. All right, but it was yes, right? Yeah, it was. One Dave, one. Yes. You're uh, 27. Yes, uh, I took uh, steroids for about 30 days, uh, four months ago. What, and now. What kind of steroids did you take? Um, initially, there were like a and little pill that I put under my tongue. Testo- the, testosterone pills? Yes. Yeah. And then I took injections as well. well. Of what? Uh, testosterone as well. Wow. For 30 days? Yes. Did you experience any side effects? Um, well, now I am. Um, well, well, I, well, you were on it? You didn't feel more aggressive? No, I didn't at all. Really? You didn't hang on to fluid? Uh, no. I didn't hang on to fluid. It needs to get a little swelled up. Swelled yeah. up in addition to the muscle development. Nice. You know, I didn't at all. And then I, you know, kind of got my head together and realized that it wasn't a good idea and I quit. Mm-hmm. And uh, But now, let's see, I guess starting in September, I've been having a hard time getting and maintaining an erection. I'm wondering if there's a connection there. Well, there, there is. Doctor, would you like to go ahead? This? Well, I think uh, you've exhausted your testosterone levels. And a lot of times when people take testosterone and use it as a steroid, you have to take uh, some sort of like something to back it up when you're done taking it to sort of reproduce testosterone because you're completely drained. Um, you know, since then, uh, when I first started having this problem, which is was in September, I went to a urologist and had my testosterone levels checked. That was mm. the first thing you got. Off, off the testosterone supplements. Right. Correct. Okay. And what was it? Uh, they, he said it was normal. Yeah. Well, you know, when when you've taken exogenous hormone, it shuts down your normal hormone production. So that's what Eric's talking about. Mm-hmm. But but in this case, it's some kind of difficulty responding to testosterone. Okay. That there is so you're the, producing it, but you're not reacting. Which to is it. the other thing that happens: your body downregulates when you overstimulate. Now, in my experience. Usually the people that I see with the problem you're describing have been on steroids for a few years. Mm-hmm. And the, there are things that could be done. Clomid, beta-HCG, and of course Viagra may be of use. But in those cases that I have seen in which this develops, it is a chronic problem. Really? I've, I've that's never, it? That's it. The body I've, just takes that path? I, I've never seen anyone develop it this quickly, though, Dave. So I suspect if you get on some Clomid or HCG or these things that sort of turn on some of those functions... It, it might be it might turn on, but you need to see an endocrinologist that specializes in in male issues. Endocrinologist. Endocrinologist. Okay. okay. All right, there, Dave. So to, to tell the truth, I may have this problem for the rest of my life, and there's no turn. Well, I, I'd be surprised, frankly. He's if really you, if you, to if scare you, other listeners. If you've been doing the steroids fine. for two years and this happened, I'd say that's it. But after a month, I, I'd be I, it, it'd be surprising. All right. So you start introducing. Uh, testosterone in your body your body says oh we got enough testosterone let's stop making it much stop making it stop responding to your body the fun thing about the fun thing the funny thing about the endocrine and neurologic system the brain and the the hormones oh i know the endocrine and neurologic system. i know you do adam but it's for the sake of the rest of the list i understand true but then i did uh, clean carpets right out of high school so i know it's like uh everclear probably understand this too but it's like the body sort of knows where it's how active it's supposed to be Right. So if you start bombarding it with things from outside the body, it, it brings itself back down or up, whatever the case may be, to where it's supposed to be. Right. Or at least tries. It's why you would draw from drugs after you've been on it for a long period of time. You're, or you, you take sedating drugs, you, they stop being sedating after a period of time. Right. Your body goes back to what should be a baseline level of activity. Right. Yeah. I understand that. And, uh, well, it's like me. I, you know, first time I masturbated, I swore it'd be good for once a month. That'd be about <coughs> it. Now I'm producing more than ever, you know? Yeah. So I have to keep going. You're, you're I don't even want right. to. It's got momentum. Yeah, I have to. I'll explode. You will. Within the next half hour, so <laughs> back. So we're going to have to get back to work. But, uh, Eric, how do you know so much about steroids? I was actually uh, reading about it in a PDR the other day. Oh, really? It's strange, right? Wow. That was the one thing I was reading about. Well, seren- it's testosterone. Serendipity. Elizabeth? Yes. Yeah. You're 17. What's up? Um... I've been going out with this girl for, it's been over two years now, and um, my parents found out about it when we were together for like three weeks. How old is your girlfriend? She's 20 now. 20. Mm -hmm. All right. And so you're a full-fledged lesbian? Card-carrying. Yes? Um, I don't know how you really put it. She's the first girl I've ever been with. Right. But you're into girls, not guys. Yeah. You like it. Yeah, well, it's kind of like, you know, I check out both, but, you know, I'm into her. Well, you've you've had her for a couple of years, didn't yeah. you see? <laughs> well, that, that's that makes you a lesbian. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> right, whoa, 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 whoa. Why are you living it down? Why are you playing it down so much? Well, I don't know. Um, How old are you? I'm 17. Is there mm-hmm. a lot of chaos in your life? Well, 
with like how my family's dealt with the situation, it's kind of strange, you know. Hmm. Right. Okay. I would, I would bet how your family dealt with you in general was something a little aggressive to begin with, and this sounds like you sort of intend it to be problematic for them. Well, that's interesting assertion there, Drew. <laughs> Let uh, let's not cast judgment. Well, this just is yet. this is that this is that I got to tell you on Thanksgiving. Well, yeah. Why did you tell your parents uh, you were a lesbian so young? Well, I didn't actually tell them. It's it's like I'm I've, I've known her for about five six years, mm-hmm. and we've been friends, and they've known that she's openly gay. And um, my older sister found out about it, and of course, her big mouth had to go tell my parents about it. Well, yeah. And let them know what was going on. All right, all right. Well, the the, the point is, is you've had this relationship, mm-hmm. and your parents don't like it. Well, they don't know about it right now. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm I'm done with the questions. <laughs> they know you're a lesbian. They just don't know you're currently in a relationship. They know that we started going out, and they thought it was a phase. And then I would, you know, just throw it away. And so I lied to them and told them that I was no longer with her. And now we've, and that was when we were going out for like three weeks or a month. And now we've been together for two years. Right. So it's, to it's safe to say. We're still together. Yeah. All right. Do you want to tell them? I mean, I kind of want to tell them because I plan on moving out with her in August. Yeah. And I kind of, I would like for them to know and, you know, be happy for me instead of, you know, look down well, on me about forget it. about that. Yeah. Listen, yeah, I, I got two TV shows and a radio show. My family's not happy for me. <laughs> forget about the uh, lesbian business. And they're never going to be happy for you about that. They may learn to accept it and they may still have love for you. I don't think they're ever going to be happy about your choice. I, mean, I don't want to freak you out, but this is probably the kind of people they are. But right. here's reality. the whole deal. You're living underneath your dad or your mom or your stepdad or your weird uncle's roof right now, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Why stir things up? Why not wait to move out and then drop the bomb? <laughs> why make... You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Why raise... Why not just be a model prisoner until it's time to make the break? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, look at, look at it as you being in prison. Why go F around with the warden and piss him off? When you still got another four or five months before you make the break, the tunnel is not completed yet. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. So finish the tunnel, wait till you make the break, then leave the warden a note and take off. And once you get outside the prison, you can go back and torment the warden. Sure. You see, the hardest part is that I don't, I don't want to leave and then just drop the bomb on them like that. Yes, you do. Let's be on bad terms after. Well, I'm gone. what kind of terms do you think you're going to be on if you tell them tonight? I don't know. <laughs> Listen, why do you want to tell them so bad? Why do you? Why, why are you angry at them? I mean, I'm not angry. Yes, at them. you are. What do they do? <laughs> no. What kind of that. bad parents are it's they? Like my dad kind of accepted it. Yeah. And he was just like, "I'm going to disagree with it because I don't want to, you know, make your mom mad about it." All right. Well, what's up with your mom? I don't really know. She's just completely thinking her daughters are, you know, straight and narrow, and they're going to well, follow the path you'll, she said. You'll, you'll show them. <laughs> yeah, right, do the time for now. Why do you hate your mom? I don't hate my mom. Seriously, really. what's up with her? Wait, because I want to tell her. What did she do to you? What What did she do? She hasn't done anything. Nothing. Nothing. She's been a good mother. Very good mother. A very good mother. Yeah. All right. Well, then leave her alone. <laughs> Move out of the goddamn house and tell her. Why are you going to torture her? Yeah. Don't. Don't. Which is it? One or the other? Well, also, you have this sort of idealized expectation that, you, that they are going to disappoint you with. So just realize who they are, how they're going to react, and then plan accordingly. Don't make your life miserable by doing it now. Get out. It's going to be a bad situation with them because that, that's how they are. Let's don't tell anyone anything as long as you've got, uh, got to live with them for X amount of months. They're going to make it, things hard on you. And I don't believe the part about the great mom. She don't like her mom. Well, I, I, both of us there. got the vibe that she wanted to get some payback to the parents. Oh, yes. Yeah. I did get that. Terry? Yeah. You're 26. Yeah. What's up over there? Um, I've been married with my wife for six months now, and mm-hmm. whenever we try to have sex, I prematurely ejaculate. What nice. does that mean? You like her. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean prematurely for you? Um, before I uh, get it in. Then can before you... you get it in. Yeah. Holy Christ! That's a uh, that is premature. I mean, what are you doing before you get it in? Um, <laughs> um, just foreplay, making out with her, yeah. rubbing her. And... Well, you're married. Eh? You should should have stopped that a long time ago. Yeah. Hey, you just put it in. Before I go to put it in, though, I just... 
Yeah, well, you're, you're so busy uh, rubbing and smooching, you, your penis has been alerted. Isn't there a time for a second round? Yeah, how about round two? After after I go once, though, I just it just I right. can't go again. Roll over and go to sleep. Yeah. Really? You, let's say you, you you couldn't get it going, let's say, half hour later? I'm 26. Maybe. Maybe. 26, I could have probably pulled that off. Now I get that calf pull. And I pull, <laughs> pull my muscle and my calf. You're awake long like, enough to even... Experience that? You know, uh, they tell me I, I'm, I'm asleep and uh, holding my calf and wincing. Hey, uh, hey, Terry. Yeah. What? Wow! Before you even get it in, and what are you doing in foreplay? Uh, just, just making out, rubbing. Wow. Stuff like that. Terry, what does your wife look like? She's pretty hot. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not the thing. That's un- un- for, you know it. It makes sense that that's how it would work, but it probably doesn't. Not that there's anything wrong with your wife, Terry, but yeah. you could uh, rape a troll, and the same thing would happen, right? Um, Thank you. Probably Thank you not. Much. A troll? That's yes, a troll. Uh, all right. So Buddy, just keep doing it until you get it right. What, what is your question, Terry? Um, is there anything I can do that would um, prolong the period so I could could get it and in. There are medications, uh, Prozac, those sorts of medicines. The serotonin reuptake inhibitors actually are sometimes prescribed for this. There's um, how about like half a quaalude <laughs> and well, like how about, some, how about some cough medicine? The bullet from the chamber routine. Yeah, how about you masturbate? You know, before? Yeah. No, during. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> yeah, before. You're already doing it during. Why do I believe him? Why I don't know. Him? I don't know. Why don't? Why doesn't Drew believe you? He don't believe me. Uh oh! Now I don't believe him with that. He don't believe me. All right, well, Jerry. Le- okay, listen, listen. And let's just say what you're saying is is true. Ma- how about masturbating? Let's say 45 minutes before you have the sex. Okay. You think that might work? We can try it. Try anything. Yeah. Well, we're not going to try. You got to do this one on your own. <laughs> All right. All righty. All right. I-, I don't know what else to say other than. The, the, this does have a way of working itself out, I, I do believe. But if you're a guy who's having the orgasm before you get it in, I mean, to me, the, the clock hasn't even begun. Right. The first date is one thing, too. This is his wife. Yeah. yeah this, but he, he, also, if he, he sort of seems so resigned to it. If he doesn't work on it, it ain't going to get better. I think right. he's a, uh, defeated. Until he hits about our age when he loses the will to live. And then right. he just won't bother at all. Yeah. How about he rubs a little coke on it? I, that seems yeah. to you. You're, you're hot on that one. Right? Yeah, it's coke good, or good really tip. thick condom. That's yeah, condoms an idea. That's your solution to everything. Then. How about how about a little a little compromise? Buddy, sprinkle, think of it. Think of the little, condom is like training wheels. Sprinkle some coke in the condom and then put the condom on. Was it, can we agree to disagree? Sure. Yes. That sounds fine. All right. Eric Dane is here from uh, Gideon's Crossing. We're going to take a little break. When we come back, we we'll speak to Eddie. Eddie's 18 girlfriend is cheating on him with his best friend. How to confront her after this. <laughs> Line. I'm Adam Carolla. He is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Eric Dane is our guest tonight. He plays Dr. Wyatt Cooper. Hey. From Gideon's Crossing, 10 o'clock, ABC. Monday nights, that would be, uh, well, it's on as we speak. That would be right now. That is absolutely right. But, um, well, turn the TV on and watch Gideon's Crossing. Just leave the sound down. And then um, when Eric talks, turn it up. Unless he's talking here, in which case you have to keep it down. We can just use two mics. I can do both. It sounds it sounds uh, reasonable, Eddie. Hey, Adam. Hey, you're 18. What's up? Uh, well, my girlfriend's cheating on me with my best friend. Well, now my ex best friend and my ex girlfriend. Buddy, drop her. Yeah, you're done. That's it. Okay. Speaking from experience. Oh, really? Yeah. What happened? Uh, huh? Same thing. Hell, we girlfriend sleep. I was I was 25, 26, mm. I think. Twenty five. Oh, oh, and shut up for a second. Eh? Start ahead. sleeping with a friend, man. You got it. You got to let it go. Yeah. Did you try to hang on, Eric? I did some other things, but uh, you know, it was pretty much it out of air, my. It took the air out of the guy's tires. It was, nah, I never, I never got violent, but it was, you know, it's a buddy. Leave. Mind bending experience. Leave the I'm country. Sure. Yes. Hey, uh, Eddie. Yeah. Were you very much in love? Uh, yeah, she has a three-year-old son from a previous boyfriend. How old is she? She's 19. 16. Hmm? She sounds like a dynamite individual. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I really liked her and everything. And see, I think my, one of my problems is I fall for women too easily. No kidding. Yeah, you're going to rescue them. Yeah. 
Well, all right. She's chaotic, though, She's right? doing you a favor. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, I understand that. And I actually almost did go let out, his, let out the air out of his tires before he went up to military weekend this weekend. Sure. Well, I, mean, I, I was, I mean, I was shaking. I mean, yeah. not to mention I was sick, but... Hey, uh, Eddie? Yeah? I know this is something that you is going to have a hard time letting in right now, the way you're feeling, the age you are, and all that kind of stuff. But all three of us uh, mature males are sitting here thinking back at the, to the time we were 18 and thinking, you've dodged a major bullet. Yeah. This chick, yeah, but this chick has, is... has, has probably a history of uh, shaky, chaotic relationships. For Christ's sake, she's, eight, she's 19, she has a three-year-old already. Mm -hmm. You would have been just stupid enough to marry her in six months. She would have continued with her chaos. You guys would have popped out a couple of kids between you, and then you would have been locked in, brother. Mm -hmm. you, would have been, you would have been 20 and a half and up to your ears in it. It could it could happen to you again too, so you know you have that to look for. It forward absolutely to. will happen to him again. Yeah, I, I yeah. Well, there you go. So I'll see you in. But hell. you'll be prepared. Yeah, hey, he'll be older say, at least. I have to say, Adam, you're lucky. You have the juggies near you. You also have the women on trampolines. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. All right. It's not luck. I, we pay those women to stand next well, to us hey, and act so happy. Good. And act happy. <laughs> you understand? We give them bonuses for acting happy. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Luck. Nothing to do with it. Chris? Yes. You're 18. What's up? Um, my question's for Dr. Drew. Mm -hmm. um, I've been with my girlfriend for about a year and a half. Right. And we haven't had sex. And we've talked about sex, but um, she's always said that her excuse was that she wanted to wait till marriage because of her religion or whatever, Christianity. Mm -hmm. And then she just told me tonight that she had general warts, and that's the reason why she didn't want to. How do you think she me. got those? Yeah. How, did she, how did she happen to get those warts? I, uh, she said she had them from her last boyfriend. Well, so if there can be an immaculate conception, why not immaculate venereal disease? Yeah, sure. Why not? And she said that she's been getting treatment on it. Her last appointment was like last month, and the doctor said that they were gone. Buddy, those don't go away. Yeah, those, those don't, don't go away. No, those don't go Well, the virus doesn't go away. The Hold warts on. go away. Eric, you read an article on that? <laughs> yeah, I was reading so, the PDR. <laughs> <Adam>. <laughs> If she doesn't have, if I, if she doesn't have anything on her, if I can't see anything on her, is this still contagious? Is there a yeah, that I can potentially. Get you not as contagious as if you can see something, but potentially contagious. Okay. And there's okay. certain percentages of what viruses will clear on their own, but there's no way to predict for whom that's going to be. So you hey, just got to assume she's away? contagious. Yeah. For some people, it does. Hey, Chris. Yeah. So she has had sex then. Yes. I see. All right. Now, how's that? I just found this out last night. Oh, good times, brother. And uh, how's that going? Psalm 24, the Lord yeah. giveth. And the Lord uh, giveth. Giveth the, the wards. <laughs> and then taketh. And they taketh away. Oh, he certainly does. So, Chris, are you, are you okay? You, I'm okay. You able to uh, get through this? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, it, it, half of your friends have wards. I promise. Okay. She she owes you sex, and, and that's, by the way, it's not half the population, only one-tenth of one percent. These are your friends. Half of your friends have them, right? Is that what you're saying, Drew? Thank you. Chris? Yeah. All right, so now you're guaranteed sex. All right. You understand? <laughs> she owes you. Okay. By law, she owes you sex now. All right, thanks, Adam. All right, good times. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Adam told me. Yeah, dude. Hey, I got a note from Adam. <laughs> <laughs> well, the note's for a blowjob, but... <laughs> That'd be nice. Oh, boy. I, I'd write those. I'd, I'd probably sell them before I gave them away. No doubt. Ebony? Yes. You're 21? Yes. What's up? Um, I just, I'm just kind of confused. Um, I don't know what's, what my problem is because I've never, you know, had a boyfriend. Yeah. I sort of have lukewarm attraction to guys, you know, and I just sort of have this look but don't touch attitude. When people approach me, it kind of freaks me out. Is your real name Ebony? Hmm? Is your real name Ebony? No, my real name is stranger than that. What is it? I'd rather not say. Okay. Well, come on. You can't dangle that stranger than Ebony out in front of us and not give it to us. Come on, sister. What is it? It's Ife. Ife? It's come yes. again? Yes. Wow. What kind of name is that? It's Yoruba. It's Yoruba? Yes. Wow. There you go. These are your Yerbanese? Yeah. Maybe. You know, with a whole silly page. Who knows? Oh, right. that's cool. That's Yerberific. So, wow. You're not... You've never had a boyfriend. Right. And have you ever dated? Uh, little, not really. 
but you think you're attracted to guys? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I am, but it's just that, I mean, I have this whole look but don't touch. I just don't want to invade people's space. I don't want to bother people. Yeah, you're, uh, I feel that a lot of my sexuality is not turned outward, but more, it, has, it doesn't really have much to do with other people, more to do with me. If that makes any kind of sense. Right. What, what have you been doing? You've been uh, burning a lot of incense and uh, putting on a lot of patchouli oil and reading too much. <laughs> what's up with you? What, what's what I'd up? like to know. You come from a bunch of hippies? No. What are you talking about? Your Inward, mom. outward. What is that? What are you talking about? I, I don't really know. That's why. Well, I'm why are you getting so philosophical about the whole thing? Well, sex is a different thing for the Yerbanese. That's true. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I remember uh, <laughs> the guy from uh, Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids was from Yerba, Yuba, 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 Yerba. Do you remember that kid? <laughs> he, he used to look through his hat. What <laughs> his name was? Hey. Oh, oh. Hey, uh, Devi, Ebony? Yeah. Uh, look, maybe you're a lesbian and you're just not coming to grips with it. Why are you so freaked out about people touching you? Ooh. I don't know. I just... What, what does that associate with you? Um... Uh, I guess the potential for getting hurt, either emotionally nope. or physically. And did somebody do something to you? No. You have yes. no association, no no memories come, come on. to mind. I no. mean, I've been followed on the bus, and that kind of freaked me out. But nothing. No. Nothing. Now, why touching? Why is the touch part so so and awful to you? Well, I mean, if I know, if I have a friend who I know likes to give hugs, I have no problem with that. But if it's someone <clears throat> who, all right, hold on, I got to, I got to cut you off because that's not what we're talking about. Drew, we're on the same, we're going in the same direction here, and tonight I think it's going to be one of those snake eyes nights yeah. for us. But I'm going to try anyway. All right, all right. Let me just do a little line of questioning here, real right. quick. Where's your dad? Uh, he's at work. And uh, is he a good dad? Uh, he, he tries. How's this? Uh, what do you mean? What's wrong with him? Uh, he has anger management problems. Uh huh. Okay. So is he? Is he struck you before? I wouldn't say. Oh please. Struck. Oh, let's uh, uh, struck. Shook. <laughs> slapped. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't but, say struck. But yeah, kicked. I mean, he, he has anger problems. Yes. Been aggressive towards you. Yes. He's been aggressive with you. Okay. So so you were traumatized to some degree by him, wouldn't you say? Uh, I get you could say that, Ebony. It just comes through loud and clear yep. that that anybody approaching you, it's like like a like a puppy dog has been beaten. It's like you cringe just the approaching of another person, and God only well, knows, especially a male. And if that the male's coming at you with uh, an aggressive instrument, his you know, penis, some, yeah, <laughs> it, it would be threatening and difficult. <laughs> Does that become a weapon? No sword, yeah. All right, man. I don't really got a sword. I got more of a, a dagger, uh, yeah, pocket knife. <laughs> you have a bottle opener. All right, listen. Uh, you need. Can you move out of the house? Uh, I will be pretty soon. All right. All right. You need to get out of the house, and you probably need to get a little therapy and talk to somebody and do a little work because of you know growing up with your violent dad and the way he was and freaking or, 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 you out. Or try a little to have bit. get a relationship and try to get used to having somebody touch you and be intimate with you and care about you and feel close to that person it, it is possible to feel okay about that but you have to let that in if you can't that's when therapy becomes necessary all right yeah i also tend to get hit on by you know 50 year old men yeah, who are yeah. homeless with three teeth two of which are gold so. the, the abusive guys sure. all right Listen, they, they, they see you as a good victim because you've been a victim your whole life you're not real fond of guys either are you i mean you're probably a little bit angry toward them hmm. i don't blame you but you know what i'm saying mm. yeah. yeah yeah all right all right, you got you got your work cut out for you. But that's all right. Just do it. Okay. All right. Take Thank care you. of yourself. Thank all right. you. All righty. Yeah. What are you going on? Huh. Yeah. Well, we hope. I I, uh, <clears throat> I have my uh, I have my serious doubts. All right, we're gonna take a little break. When we come back, uh, we'll speak to uh, Daniel. Daniel, sixteen. He's bisexual, but hasn't gotten hard around guys. Huh? Hmm. Well, it really good? Okay. Daniel. Yeah. You're bisexual? Yeah. Is it is it like a confused teen night on Love Line? I mean, I know every night is confused teen night, but tonight doesn't seem like no one can figure out their sexuality. Disorganized teen night. Yeah. Not just confused. Daniel, you're bi? I know that I'm definitely attracted to males a lot. Yeah. I mean, I just realized like when I was 15, probably. I know. No, yeah. listen, I believe you, because any anyone who drags out the word a lot is into guys, and they go, a lot. 
Yeah. All right, Daniel. Hold on a second. We okay. got to take a break. Okay. All right. We'll be uh, right back with Daniel after this. <laughs> Drew, shut the door there. With your loved one. Boop. It is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That be uh, Doctor Drew over there. Eric Dane is our guest tonight from Gideon's Crossing. Doctor Wyatt Cooper. It's never uh, Doctor uh, Moisha Fagenbaum <laughs> over there. <laughs> Jeez, I, I had a call from a emergency room up north uh, yesterday. And it was from Doctor Pinsky. I almost crapped. Really? That was wild. That's you. Yeah. Why? She goes, no, it's me. I go, no, no, it's me. I, no, it's me. She doesn't spell your name, her name, same, same way. Same, same way, yep. really. Yep. Well, that is just, uh, just incredible. You know what I was thinking? Mm. I never thought of this, but uh, since we're talking about last names and we're all, you know, being pretty candid, <laughs> uh, uh, my last name, uh, Carolla, C A R, yeah. and everyone refuses to spell it C A R. Yeah. They always spell it C O R. I just stumbled. I uh, just discovered yesterday. As I was yeah, yelling at someone for spelling it the wrong way for the thousandth time. Uh, ironically, my name is spelled like the car. I yeah. mean, my name actually has the word car in it. Yeah. But the car, the Corolla car, does not have the word car in it. I think that's going to add to the confusion. Ooh. The car yeah, spelled C-O-R? Mm. Car is a C-O-R. And you're and, C-A-R. Which is not spelled the same as a car, although the first three letters and the ones that are most confused spell the word I car. I think the O is Toyota Corolla. You yeah, know, the alliteration there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what you're saying. Neither Forget it. It. Nobody calls. cares. Yeah. Okay, ready to roll? Yeah, Daniel. Yeah, you're 16 years old. What's up? Well, about like I don't know. For like the last three weeks, it seems like I have not been able to get hard. Like, and I've had like quite a few sexual encounters with guys, but I haven't. Had so, any. so just recently, this started happening. Yeah. Well, actually, I was on. Well, the thing was, was like a year ago, I, I got on this Zoloft. You want it now? No. Um, You're off it? off of it about eight months ago because I was on it, and then I was, like, you know, really scared that I had, like, because I, like, I just came out, like, and I was just having, like, a lot of sex and stuff in the gay community especially, and um, I was not able to get a heart or get an erection or anything. Like on the Zoloft. And so I was scared, and I went to the hospital, like, and didn't let my parents know about it or anything, and then they, it turned out that they turned some me pills, and then... And what do you want now? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. And you're having the problem again. And I'm having the problem again. And just with men. Um, I haven't experienced with girls yet. I haven't been with a girl for now. Like, Try it, man. Know, over a Make month. sure that the, yeah. the mechanics are still... No, no. Hey, Daniel. Yeah. That's it with you and the ladies. <laughs> you're uh, you're dude bound from this point on. But you're what? You're a... Uh, dude and duty. That's it. Why are you sort of... Uh, I know. Listen, banishing him. I, I know. He's gay. That's fine. But, you know, forget the bye. You said bye to bye a long time ago. It's uh, okay. it's gay time, buddy. Yeah. That's fine. You, you're you gayer than you are bi, aren't you? Um, and, yeah. I have a twin brother who's also gay. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Does, uh, things, are things oh, yeah. working yeah, out for your twin brother? Too. You know, I was thinking about the, the biological predisposition for homosexuality. And I started thinking about Alexandra Paul. Yeah. Yes. Remember that? Hey. From Baywatch. Yeah. Her sister, gay. Yes. Right? Yes. Identical twin. She's mm. not? Yeah. Uh, no. Alexander Paul? No. Yeah, probably not. No. You never know. No. Yeah. She's got a good publicist. You don't know. No, she's not. No. All right. But uh, yeah, her sister. Her sister's a fireman. Mm. Fireman. A firewoman. Not a no, fireman. No. A fire person. No. no, no. Fireman. She is a fireman. She is a. Well, a she prefers fireman. She is a butch. I think her name is Butch. She changed her name legally to Butch. She likes sliding down the pole. <coughs> oh yeah. She, well, actually, I don't think she's fond of the pole. I think uh, I think she likes diving into that big inflatable air bag <laughs> better than the pole. I mean, if we're talking symbolism. Yeah. Hey, Daniel. Yeah. Uh, what's up, though? I mean, you're 16. For Christ's sake, what are you in the 10th or 11th grade? 11th. You're talking about coming out in the gay community and well, uh, lots of partners, n- not needing your penis because you just came out. And it, I mean, what the a, hell's... A, year, a year and a half ago, you, your sexual performance wasn't quite at the peak it should be. It's at a 15. huge, huge gay community in high school, too. Yeah, I mean, it's it like wh- who the what were you like? I, I think it's like Andy Warhol or somebody over here, you know. I mean, what what's going on? You're you're in high school. Can't you slow down a little bit? Yeah, like the thing was is like in junior high, like I knew my brother was gay, and I was embarrassed by it. So I went and had sex with like twenty women, like or twenty girls in like, junior high. 
Yeah. What age yeah. are you talking about here? I'm talking about Jesus Christ. I wish, I, had well a, I, wish I had a gay brother I could have been humiliated by. That was what was missing. So you went out and uh, you hold off and had sex with 20 women. Yeah, at least. And then women? Like, girls, uh, women, actually, from the teenage until, like, up until late 20s. Seniors. Late 20s. What yeah. are they? Are these, like, welfare moms? <laughs> Where are you getting these? What's going on? Where no. do you live? Huh? What's I going lived on in, over there? I lived this? in Sandy. And then I lived, like, in Salt Lake. Are you on the street? No. Right. I lived at home. Okay, how are you nailing all these broads when you're in the 8th grade and the ninth grade and you're nailing a bunch of women in their 20s? Well, they were not all in their 20s. I mean, most of them are like in the, like teenagers just like me. And in Salt parties. Lake City. Yeah. That's uh, got to be a tough place to pull that off. Well, uh, no. apparently not. <laughs> no, not at all. Okay, so listen, Daniel. Yeah. Uh, quite frankly, I'm glad your penis has taken a break. Yeah. Well, I think that's the issue is that whatever he's been, act been acting out about is sort of taking a different form. Yeah. Whatever the feelings are that he was sort of uh, hellbound to to uh, act out upon, maybe coming closer to the surface and are kind of shutting him down. Okay, good. Hey, Daniel? Yeah? Just relax a little, would you? I mean, I, I know we're not answering your question, but we're, we're just appalled <coughs> at the amount of uh, sex you're having. Well, I worry about him getting an STD, a bad one. Yeah, I worry about that, too. Have I you got been checked? I've been tested five times in the last... In the You've been tested for hepatitis C? Um, yeah. Okay. Hey, you know, when when I was 16, I was playing a Stratego and watching Love Boat. Uh, this guy's like, hey, you're, you're having a anal sex, right? I am. Yeah. Slow down with the parts. Let me tell you something about the ass. You wear that thing out too early. Hey, how about screwed. last night? Oh, when you were nailing me in the parking lot? No, no. We had that call with a woman that was bleeding, oh, remember? Jeez. I should have never shouted that out. Couldn't control her stool. True. Don't say about last night if you yeah, don't want to shout out the And that's another conversation. And that was going to be it for, not, her, not in front of for me. good. That was yeah. it. All right. <laughs> but, Daniel, listen, I, I, you know, I, uh, we're, we're goofing around, but he, he really has we got a lot of problems. <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah. what can we say? Get some help? I mean, it's, it's Just slow down. All right, there you and go. Wear well, condoms. Wear listen, condoms. I hope oh that God. penis takes another year off. Wear condoms. Wear inner tubes. Ricky? Yeah. You're 19. What's up? Um, I got a three-year-old daughter, and it's just like she gets attached to all of my, um, my male friends, like, right away. Mm-hmm. And her father's not around. And I just, I know that's not good for her, because when, I don't yeah. know. Why do you bring those guys around? Well, there, it's not like I bring them around to meet her. It's just I'm... You know, I take her with me. Uh, well, why don't you make a point of not doing that? <laughs> oh, geez, They're my me. friends. I mean, hey, listen. She's your daughter, goofball. Come on, it's damaging to her. She needs. To, if if you know there's going to be a male around in her life for many years, and this is a stable friendship that you will have had and will continue to have for a long time, that's great. Bring that person into her life. Otherwise, don't do this. But hold on, there, uh, Doctor uh, Doctor High Horse. Are you saying these are your friends? Yeah, they're just my friends. Aha. Uh -huh. See that, Drew? But the, but I'm still with Drew halfway, which is if, if it's upsetting to her and this is something that she keeps doing, then then make Wait, some sacrifices. Th these can't be friends that stick around. Why would it be keep doing it? In other words, it'd be just she attached to these guys and that's that. You understand the keep doing it part doesn't make sense here. If indeed well, she could have a number of friends, platonic friends who are males. Is that who we're talking about, Ricky, or who are we yeah. talking about? We're talking about just my friends. Like, okay, say, um, uh, I have this, this one friend, and he, he's been around since she was an infant. But yeah. lately, he, you know, he, he just had a baby himself, so, you know, he hasn't been around her too much. But she always wants to see him and stuff like that. So, I, I mean, I don't know. If, That's if you not can't. bad. She's 19. She's if, got friends. If you can't provide her that stable relationship with men, it's going to be a problem for her. Where, where Can you find a guy who's, you know, new daddy? <laughs> no, I have not had very good luck with guys. <laughs> What's the matter? They just... <laughs> Little mm -hmm. her dad, her, her mom, her mom had a bunch of stepdads, and did you stay did, at home reader Doctor Seuss? Did you have a bunch of stepdads? I have a stepfather, and all and, right, uh, they've been married for uh, fifteen years. My uh, father isn't around. Okay, so. how about during those four years? What was that like when he first left? Um, I was too young. All I know is he was bad to my mother. You know, he right. He was real bad to her, and she had three kids with him. Great. And she had uh, my oldest brother when she was 17. And Well, 
Uh, were there a bunch of guys in and out of your life when you were a little kid? Do you think? I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I remember like a few, a few guys, but I don't think they were like boyfriends. All right. Either. Well, let, let, they were just friends, like right. the ones you bring around. All right. But let, let okay, Drew, get, relax over there. Go, come on, go take a breather or something. Would you? Yeah, make yourself a nice uh, cup of postum or something and chill out. Would you? People drinking that? What's no. postum? I, I don't know. My uh, mom used to feed it to me. No. R- yes. I'm, oh, oh, my God. Don't no uh, do you hate her. It's, it's all in the lawsuit. It's all in the lawsuit. I'll give you. You're, you're going to be deposed. Copy, yes. You'll be deposed in a couple of days. Are you kidding? We need your, your clinical opinion of me. Hey, Ricky. Yeah. Listen, you're 19, single mom. Your work's cut out for you. It ain't going to be easy. You're going to have to make sacrifices for your young child. So that she does not get pregnant as early as you did and as early as your mother did. You understand? Yeah. Got to break that chain. And that means sacrifices for you. All right? And also not behaving in the manner in which your mom did. There you go. We'll take a break. We'll be back. Love line. I'm uh, Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Moonlighting. Getting a little work done during the show. Eric Dane is our guest tonight. He plays hey. Dr. Wyatt Cooper on Gideon's Crossing. Monday nights. Well, it just ended, everybody. 10 o'clock on ABC. And the phone number here is 1-800-LVE-191. And we'll uh, now speak to Danielle, who is 23. Danielle? Hello. What's up? How you guys doing tonight? Good. I love you guys. Well, thanks. Listen to you all week long at work. <laughs> Where do you work? Um, I work um, at a company. So I do customer service. Where? Oh, you work in a company. <laughs> Wait a minute. She, she doesn't sound like a customer service rep. She's pleasant. <laughs> I don't want anybody. I want to get in trouble for calling from work. I understand. <laughs> oh, you're working right now? Yeah. All right. Um, okay, my question. The Irvine Spectrum. Um, around there, yes. <laughs> um, every time my husband and I have sex, he comes very quickly. Mm. Um, we have sex for about two minutes, and, and he comes. This happens about four times in a row. We finally are like, okay, forget this. Four in times life. in a row in one evening? I, yes. How long in between? That doesn't sound like... <laughs> no, it's like right in between. We're just like, we have sex for a minute or two minutes, and he comes, and then we... He he pulls out, and then we try it again, and he comes, and he pulls out. And <laughs> it's good. He's into you. Same boner? Yeah. Well, I, we just had a baby, so... Same boner, though? I'm sorry? Same boner? Yeah. I mean, same one? Yeah. It doesn't go limp? No, no, not at all. It's kind of an interesting wow. philosophical Why does he question. Pull out, then? Does it, when your boner goes away, is that one gone forever? Do you know what I'm saying? No. Yeah, I wonder what Kant would say about that. <laughs> or Hume. <laughs> if a man gets a boner in the woods and no one's there to... Uh, okay. So he, he, he maintains an erection and goes four times. Yeah. Why, does he, why does he pull out if he's not... Three know? or four? Well, we just had a baby. I have a three-month-old. So we can go feed the baby in between. What? What? I understand what the, why the break if he's still hard. Well, because I don't want to get pregnant again. I'm not on birth control yet. I mean, what about condoms? Well, that diaphragm or something. Wait like a minute. That. Wait a minute. So he's pulling out and having his orgasm. He has sperm in his urethra. So when he goes back in, that sperm is being deposited. Okay. okay this so guy. The, this guy cries and sperm comes out of his eyes. <laughs> so this guy. This, this guy sounds like a, a, well, some sort of superhero well, too. Are you, are you breastfeeding? Um, no, no, not, not any longer. Right, so you're going to get pregnant again. But oh, of I, course you're going to get pregnant. The, the, for the guy, the guy takes his uh, filthy, filthy sperm-laden penis and puts it back in you. Just because he gave it a quick chamois with the gym sock doesn't mean it's free of sperm. How that's, long? That's not my question, though. My question I don't care is... what your question is. First off, we're telling you you're going to get pregnant again. And if you don't want to get pregnant, you should do something about that. Okay, I will. How long in between All is right. he uh, waiting? Um, we... couple minutes. Two yeah. minutes between ejaculations? Yeah. And he's hard for that two minutes in between ejaculations? No, no, no. We have sex for two minutes. Ah. And he comes. And then how and long? Then he shoots his load. And then he... Then he who? Then he comes right back in. <laughs> immediately. Immediately back in. Yeah. And then two more minutes. Yeah. And then two again. And then two again. Yeah. So it's an eight-minute experience. Yeah, pretty much. It's all together, nice. not so bad. Well, these me a little sad. <laughs> Why? Well, because I'm not fulfilled. <laughs> Ooh. Well, he can go more times. Make it six. Yeah. But you get 12 minutes. She may not be fulfilled, but the room is filled. <laughs> Jesus Christ, four times. Son of a bitch. 
<laughs> it's 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 bizarre. And and so here's the question: If there's no time difference between the first and the third or the fourth, eventually though there has to be some some either stopping or yes, something. I mean, couldn't for the fifth time wouldn't it take him ten minutes to orgasm at that point? Would it? We always give up. We're just like, okay, forget it. So maybe that's what we should try. Yes. Okay, but yes. you know what he should try? How about he does some oral sex on you? That sounds good. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the problem. Why can't he do that? I guess that would work. Why don't you get him down there? <laughs> do it right now. He doesn't do that, does he? Um, not too often, no. Yeah. Why don't you send him down there? All right. Yeah. It's important. Sounds good. And call back. Let's get a play-by-play. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, quite honestly, I, I hate to say this, but most women, if a guy went down on them for a good 15, 20 minutes, gave them an orgasm, then popped up and shot the load in two minutes, they'd be fine with that as an encounter, wouldn't you? I would be, that would be wonderful. All right. Well, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with his tongue, is there? No. no. Well, why can't you tell him Get him, him this? down there. All right. I just I'll, guess I'll have to get some cojones and <laughs> tell him to do it. What, what well, are you afraid? He, he should be doing it. I mean, any listen, all you guys who come in two minutes, you got to compensate. You better get down there. <laughs> Let me tell you, you're like an employee in a wheelchair. I love you, Adam. <laughs> I, I'm telling you what your value is to the company. Daniel, it's that you're honest and you show up early and you work hard. Why are you afraid to tell him something as simple as this? Well, I just I guess I never really thought of it. What do you mean you never thought of it? You love oral sex. <laughs> Does right? he ever do it? Oh, I'm sorry? Does he ever do this? Does he ever perform oral sex on you? Um, he did when we first started dating. Sure. Sure. That's the old bait and switch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I do that all the time. Oh, what do you mean? I live for this, baby. What do you mean? I'm not done. It's only been an hour. I'm just getting warmed up. Then fast forward like a month. Like, are you kidding? It's weird down there. <laughs> I'm not going down there. It's scary. I heard an owl down there. It's spooky. <laughs> All right, get him down there. Tell him I he's got to start. He's got to start making up for his shortcomings. Force him. He'll go. I will. All right. Thanks, you guys. Let's spill a little beer down there. See if you can't get him on the trail. <laughs> All right. What's his nationality? Um, he's he's a Texan. <laughs> Aha. Okay. There's there's a. There All right, is. but there's no. He doesn't have any religion or anything that would preclude him from oral sex, no, right? No, no, not Jamaican. Not at all. Right. All right. Well, then get him down there. I'll do that. Thank you guys. All so right. Much. All right. Wasn't the Jamaican guys that had a real issue with that? Yeah, they're not into is that. Is that true? Yeah. I went to Jamaica. They weren't. What a uh, cop out. They weren't big into the oral sex over there. But uh, it, guys, listen. This is what women enjoy most. Get good at it. You'll uh, you'll have a friend for life. <laughs> You may not want her, but she'll be your friend for life. Mike? Hey, yeah, what's up? Hey, you're 20. Yeah, I'm 20, and I got a pretty big problem going on. All righty. Okay, um, here's the deal. I got this uh, boss of mine. I uh, work for a company, and I just started, like, about three months ago, and I didn't have my schedule for the next week, so he told me that uh, if I give him my screen name, he'd just, you know, email it to me over email. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, that's pretty cool. And so I give him my screen name, and yet I find out that he's gay. He's yeah. hitting on me on the Internet. So I was like, that sucks. And, uh, you know, I kind of told him I wasn't gay. I, I like females. And he, he keeps on pursuing me. And uh, he owes me, like, $1,200. We got into this uh, business deal. What deal? What were you doing? A uh, stock market. Did, what? Did you tell him to, to his face that you weren't interested? Oh, yeah. I've told him many times. Oh, okay. And, like, everyone, like, at work tells him. That I'm not interested. But the thing is, is he keeps on telling me in order for me to get my money because the stock was under his name, I have to go to his house and pick it up. Bring a couple of big friends with you. Exactly. Yeah, I tried that, and uh, my big friends, they won't go. They're like chickens because this on. guy's like huge. You can't handle a gay guy? Come on. Go oh. over there. Go Do you want to go handle a gay guy? Sure. What What is the matter with you? Go over there and go get your money. What? What? Uh, what? I don't understand this. What, you, what do you, mean? you must be very frightened of potentially being homosexual, Mike. Yeah, I don't like. I don't like men going down on me or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, he's not well, going first to. First off, you just close your eyes and have another swig of that beer. You're yeah, fine. Yeah. Is he, you don't know is the he a criminal, and you're concerned he's going to assault you? No, listen, this is he's, BS. he's goofing off. <laughs> Besides, idiot. Oh, Drew, come on. He, he could have been a little more creative. Yeah, I guess he could have, although I enjoyed it. 
show. You think he made all this stuff up about the stock market and the email and all that? There'd be some kernels of truth in there somewhere. It's still, still an idiot. Well, yeah. Joe? The caller goes by the name of Joe? Joe. Joe, who is a 19-year-old uh, boyfriend. Hi. Yeah. Joe. What? Jill. 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 That works, too. Oh, I see. Hi. I'm sorry. Screen says Joe. All right, Jill. What's up? Um. Okay. After my boyfriend and I have sex, which is very frequently, um, like, my vagina, like, hurts and stings and stuff. Right. It, it, it sucks. Yeah. But, like, uh, I don't know. That could be some sort of a urinary infection, no? I don't know. Well, you're 16, you're sexually active. Have you had a pelvic exam? Uh, yeah. And what did they find? Um, nothing. It was all good. Do you have any that problem? That was like a while ago. That was like maybe six months ago. All right. Any trouble lubricating? Uh, no. It's no. all good. And how, how long does this go on for? You guys are together. How long what? How long do these encounters go on for? Um, a long time. <laughs> how long? Like hour, maybe hour and a half. Yeah, isn't that a little bit long for you? No, it's, it's good. Yeah, if it hurts. Yeah. No, I think you're supposed to pee hurt, right like after, during. too. Well, What's I it? do, but it doesn't hurt like during. It'll be like an hour later. I know, but listen, nothing hurts during. <laughs> I mean, you, you got to know your own limits. Oh, okay. Drink lots of cranberry juice. Yeah. Yeah, well, well she's uh, talking about her vagina burning, not dysuria, not pain with urination, right? Well, it's like both. Or both. And it's both. And that's it sort of a typical. No, it's more like, it's not really like my vagina. It's like my stomach kind of area, like more. Wow, yeah. this guy's big. How how you guys doing? I mean, is he is he gentle or is he uh, you know you like well, a sheet in the wind? He's more gentle than I am, I'd say. Oh really? Oh. Yeah. What's up there, baby? Nothing. All right, sixteen. Got the Chill. nineteen. Year old. What? Slow down a little there. Okay. What is, get, get a urinalysis done to make sure there's not a urine infection sitting there all this time, maybe right. triggering all these. Feelings. What's he do? What's he do for a living? Yeah. He works in the. He's like works in a warehouse. Fantastic. He works for IDT. He makes uh, like slot machines. International game technology. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So how did you know that? How did no, I know that? Just one of those things. Talking no, to Drew. We know how you know. Oh, okay. That's all he talks about. No. All right. So he puts together slot machines. Yes. That's good. He really, uh, he really knows that coin slot too. Yeah. I'll tell you. All right, Jill. Uh, yeah. Just take it easy. Okay. Slow it down a little bit. All right. Why don't you limit yourself to half an hour? Okay. Yeah, set, an set set an egg timer. All right. And he's got to be done by then, all right? All right. All right, because I think you're wearing your parts out. Okay. All right? You're hurting yourself, right? Okay. All right, baby. Thank you. Yeah. Let me, uh, I, I don't, we've, uh, th this this comes up a lot. I, I really think the vagina is not, uh, it's not as durable as I'd like it to be, quite frankly. There's a few design changes I'd make on it if I was to put it back up on the drawing board. Well, well just share those with us. Well, first off, uh, it's way too big. Huge. <laughs> Huge. No, re no reason for all that room, especially, you know, around, the, you know, left and right. Yeah. You know, the width. Don't need that kind of room. Right. It's like ringing a dinner bell. Right. How about in terms of its function? Well, I could use a little more orgasm capability. Doesn't seem to be much good for that. I mean, you know, with the penis. Yeah. I'm talking about the vagina, not yeah, the yeah. clitoris. I understand. Vagina itself. Uh, hey, if you're going to make it smell like something... You know, make it smell like something good, something we recognize. The hamburgers? Fresh cut pine, oh. pork ribs, something. Okay. Something a man enjoys. Mm. Um, what else? I, I'd use a little more durability out of it, something that held up a little better. Sure. Something, uh, something you know, you could hang with for an hour or so without the irritability. Mm -hmm. And then there's all the uh, urine infections and yeast infections. You'd have the urine come out somewhere else. I mean, you yes. have to handle that vagina in, in like a hazmat suit. You know what I mean? It, it needs like, uh, you really should be having sex in one of those clean rooms mm -hmm. that they uh, put... Um, Laminar put flow. They put semiconductors yes. together yeah. in. Laminar flow through the room. Yeah. yeah, but it should be handled, you know, where you stick your hands through those uh, gloves that are connected to that box. The robot. The manipulate. Yeah. The robot <laughs> manipulate arms. the vagina with the robotic yeah. arm. Right, mm -hmm. lead gloves, like radiation-proof mm -hmm. gloves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm looking for more of a Jeep-type vagina not the jag humvee yeah something uh something that ran off a of kerosene you know what i mean didn't need the uh didn't need the high test mm -hmm. something just a little less delicate more of a uh more, more of a uh more of a metal drum not a steinway ah. see what i'm saying yeah All right it's easily it gets out of tune very easily you know a little more durable like the penis 
I use my penis to, you know. Open cans. I, I really, I've got an erection and launched like, uh, you know, hacky sack balls across the living sure, room. Sure. I've, uh, you know, smacked it on the counter. For a fact. Yeah. Do just because you're making a point. Hey, yank on it once in a while. You know, make that, do that thing where you stand in front of the mirror <laughs> and they can do that whipping action where you whack it against your belly and then and against it's, your it's fine. leg. My penis is as good as it was the day it came out of the shop. Low maintenance. It's like showroom condition. Right. Drew, you've seen my penis. Pristine. Showroom. Still has that new penis smell. Yeah, it was somebody else's. Yeah, right. No way it was yours. Right. Uh, vagina, it's like, oh, man, it's a Rubik's Cube Vagina's inside a, a Stradivarius. It, it really is. And no one can figure that thing out. High maintenance. They're always, they got to go to the gynecologist. Like you had sex? Yeah, you got to go to the gynecologist. So, uh, how many times you took your penis in to be looked at? Do you know what I mean? It's like a Ferrari or something. Yeah? It's like a Ferrari. You need, like, weekly checkups. Yeah, whereas we have more of a Briggs and Stratton. And that's what I'm saying I like the vagina to be like. Thank you. Sarah? Yes? You're 17. Yeah, I am. What's up? Well, um, I just recently, I don't know, I'm remembering when I was four, I was molested by my cousin, and she was 13. What was the it was sexually explicit kind of kind of thing? Of course. Well, or just actually, touching? I don't know. Is it still considered molesting? Because I was like, I like wanted to, and I mean, I was four. Well, if well, were you guys playing around, or did she molest you? Well, we were like kissing, and I don't know. It, I just, I, I tried to block it out of my memory, and a friend kind of brought it up that something had happened to him. And anyway, I just, it, it just scares me, and I don't know. She has a four-year-old daughter right now. Mm, yeah. Well, it's uh, payback time. <laughs> Go get her, baby. No. Turn about is fair play. No, but uh, anyway, oh. that wasn't my question. Oh, I see. All right, but listen, Sarah. If it, if it wasn't that much, why? It, she, every why time make she it? Came over though. She'd be like, "Oh, do you want to play?" And I was like, "Okay." Sure. So you did this for, with her for a long period of time. Probably, I don't know. Probably four times. I don't know. I don't remember very well, but it. I kind of. I'm remembering again. Are you more worried about her as a mother? No, I'm not. Well, one of my question was is because I have a, a disliking towards girls. Right. And, do you think that could have anything to do with it? Yeah, it's usually it more about a mom. Yeah. Oh no, I mean, I all my friends are guys. I mean, I'm not a tomboy. I dress like a girl, but you know, I don't like girls at all. I hate them. Well, Drew dresses like a girl too, but he Doesn't. still enjoys them. Uh, but do you, you don't like them? I mean, not only physically, but you just don't like them in general. I just don't like them in general. Uh huh. I mean, do you really have disdain toward them, or are you just more of a uh, a guy girl than a girl girl? I'm. I don't. I don't like the way girls are. I don't like how they're backstabbing. You and everything. can't. You can't trust them. Yeah, I can't trust them at all. Can't open Not them. at That's all. Mom. I mean, That's I go to thing. slumber parties and I just sit there and I'm like, oh, this sucks. Yeah. You know, I'd rather be out with the guys. You know, right. causing trouble. That's well, a, that's a mom thing. If you need someone to take your place at the next teens all girl slumber party, I might slide exactly. in, and make a little guest appearance. Yeah. Uh, um, well, what what is up with your mom? My mom. Mm -hmm. That's that's your mother. Yeah, nothing. I have a mom. <laughs> all right, hold on. Let me grab my pen and pencil here. Has a mom. Oh, has, has a mom. mom, yes. You all right with your mom? Yeah. Is she a good person? Yeah, I'm not that close with her, but yes, she's my mother. She's dynamite I'm lady. Closer. That's another, I'm more closer with my dad. Right. I like now, my why dad aren't better. you, okay, why aren't you close with your mother? I don't know. I'm, I've always kind of been the bad child, even though I'm, I get the best grades out of all my siblings. Right. So it's always is... been the arguing with your parent, mom. Isn't there like know? sort of like a rebellious stage for girls and their mothers? It's you know yes. right around fifteen, we, all 16, we do is fight. seventeen. Uh, yeah, yeah, but you've been yeah. fighting with your mom but since I think you're it's pretty normal. You've no. been fighting with your mom since you were four, though. Huh? You've been fighting with your mom forever. Basically, it's different. Okay, so you this don't a, you don't problem. have a great relationship with your mom. No. This is this is mom mom intruding mom being too invested in you mom not being empathic towards you not mom not letting you individuate this this she is I know this is all the mom she issue makes me stay home like, yeah. Yeah. every like one Friday night she made me come home at nine o'clock but the point is that because that's your relationship with your mom now you can't trust any women and this is actually important for you it's a big part of yourself that you're sort of losing to that relationship and it would actually be important for you to find a female friend and to try to sort of explore what it would be like to have a relationship with a female. How about you compromise and start with a nice lesbian? I don't think so. Sort of half male, half female? No. 
All right. Well, listen, Sarah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, A, don't focus too much on your cousin and the uh, doctor you played with there. Not a great thing, but I'm sure it didn't ruin you. B, yeah. focus more on the relationship with your mom and how you have feelings for her and about her and how those translate in your relationships with women today. And how it translates in how you feel about yourself and what pieces of yourself you leave behind because of that. All right. Okay. And uh, there's a place to focus. Thank you. All right. Good luck. I love you both. Hey, we're into you. <laughs> All right. Even if I was a chick, I'd like you. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, then she wouldn't like you. Right. But we'd I work have, it out. I have girlfriends. It's just very hard for me to connect with them. I know. You work on that. Yes. All right. Good advice. Hey, I think we're uh, we're we're uh, we're having some uh, breakthroughs, or what you call that. Speaking tonight. of break, that was good. I was I was interested. Hold on, Tamara. Hi. You're 23. Hi, Dr. Zoo. I love you. Oh, so Tamara, I love you too. But oh boy, you want to bet on this? Yeah, I'm ready to gamble. Yeah. Just based oh, on great. just based on your voice, Tamara. <laughs> um. All right. Don't don't even tell us your question. Okay. Just. All right. What is your question? <laughs> um. Well, I have this like bad habit of biting my nails. Uh huh. And um, like I pick at my acne. That's uh, exactly what I I thought it was. Right. You bite your nails. What are you going to use to pick at yourself if your nails are short? Well, there's there's always something there. I mean, uh, okay, not so very much of them. So you do some biting and picking. Yeah. Are you okay. doing? What? I don't, hold on a second, because we got to take a break. Okay. Uh, don't uh, don't pop any zits or uh, push back any cuticles while we're on a break. All right, Tamara? Okay. All right. Eric Dane is our guest uh, tonight from Gideon's Crossing. We'll take a quick break. We're going to come back and we'll do a little gambling on Tamara after this. Love line. I'm Adam Carolla. It is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Eric Dane is our guest tonight. He plays Dr. White Cooper from Gideon's Crossing. Monday nights. It'll be tonight. But we missed it. Ten o'clock on ABC. All righty. Oh yeah, use that TiVo. Gotta get that thing hooked up. Let's uh, hop back on the phones and uh, speak to Tamara. Tamara's twenty-three. Tamara. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're gonna do a little gambling on you. Right. Yeah, but you know your voice changing. It's changing. It's not a gambling type voice anymore. Should we be gambling on your past? Uh, probably. Okay, good. Hold on. All right? Okay. All right, Eric, you got any, uh, you got a dollar on you? We haven't gambled in a while on I this do, show. I um, do. Well, there's one of my car. How about I put my car keys up here? Mm. Uh, is your car worth more than a buck? Mm, yeah. You'll have to actually yeah. take his car. What's he got there? Uh, he's, uh, he's, got, <laughs> he's driving a Jag? What the hell is that? It's a rental. What kind of key is that? Well, car keys are really getting cool these days. Oh, my God. All right, this car's worth at least a buck. So put the keys up there. We know it's good for the buck. All right, let's uh, start the gambling. Let me explain the rules, Eric. We gamble on the past of the person. As you know, we uh, quickly get into the people's past, what kind of relationship they had with their parents, what, what kind of environment they grew up in, was there abuse, physical, sexual, alcoholism. What brought them to where they are today? The uh, finger-biting picker with the strange voice at 23. What, what did she experience young, in, a, in her younger days? So we're all getting, a, all getting like a drug vibe. Could be uh, some uh, drug abuse, maybe alcoholism within the family. Picking and uh, binding. Yeah, I'm thinking speed. Speed. But what, what did she grow up with? Was mama into speed? Was dada into speed? Maybe not. Maybe uh, mom and dad weren't around a lot. Yeah, but that's vague. I need something a little more specific. Maybe mom and dad drank a lot. Alcoholic. Sure. Alcoholic parents. Both? One, father. Dad was an alcoholic. Uh-huh. All right. That's, uh, that's a good bet. Good safe money there, Drew. Mm, physical and sexual abuse by six. Six guys? Six, six. Old, six. six year old. I see. Six. By, by the age of six... Physical and sexual abuse. Hmm. Wow. This could be a combo answer. Could be some, uh, could be, I'm going to go with, ah, I'm going for a very unique one. Uh, mom freaked, uh, dad out of the picture early, mom freaked out a little, raised by grandparents. Okay. Actually, I'm changing mine. Oh. I think she just likes to party. Oh. Okay. Nothing, nothing traumatic no, in the past. No, no, no. Raised by uh, maybe grandparents, maybe sister, raised by uh, off and on uh, by somebody else outside the family, and uh, and then the abuse ensued. 
Tamara? Yes. All right. Let's uh, talk about your past. All right. Well, first off, uh, dad and mom. Divorced? No. Together. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding me. And uh, any alcoholism? Absolutely. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Dad. Oh, Eric. So but close. But he backed off of that. Easy answer. money. And then what? I said too bad he changed his answer. Yeah, well, you know these actors. He didn't. He was just throwing her out there. <laughs> oh, that car is going to be sweet. <laughs> All right. So, Dad was an alcoholic, full full blown alcoholic. Um. Well, what? Yeah, big time alcoholic, Daddy. Um, yeah, up until the time I was maybe like I don't know, like eight, I don't know, like eight or something. I All don't right. remember very well. Good enough. Yeah. And and then brothers, alcoholics. Brothers. Yeah. Your brothers. Yeah. And uh, any physical abuse? Um, definitely. By mm -hmm. by drunken dad? No, actually, dad wasn't violent. Dad wasn't violent, but by one of my brothers, very very violent. Your brother's very violent. Uh huh. What What's your nationality? Mexican. Wow, you have these same. Someone sound um, sounds like um, Hawaiian or something. I thought Filipino. Um, maybe, I'm just nervous. Like, okay. All right, so your older brother was abusive. Uh-huh. And uh, what about sexual abuse? Um, not in the family, but I remember being, like, felt up by a couple cousins. Sure. Wow. At what age? Um, I don't know, like... Young? I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like, it happened daily or anything, but... Um, right. Sure, Thanksgiving. Like, by the time, I, I remember... Right. Um, Religious I holidays, things like that. When I was maybe, like, four... Right, I think that was like the first time. All right, it's bad jazz. So you got uh, you got uh, your dad boozing, you got your older brothers beaten, and you got your cousins goosing, and then the uh, maids of milking, and the hens of laying. Right? <laughs> but this this uh, sounds like a real dynamite group of folks. Your family, I know. I really, I'd really like to, uh, I'd really like to just get like an incinerary type bomb and take them all out. I mean, from a societal standpoint. All right. I give you a heads up so you could get out of the house. Actually, um, I moved out when I was eighteen. So. Mm. Good, good. All right. Um, and also, Adam, um, I was raised by my sister because mom was always working. Ooh. You know. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Well, are we get, are we going to get to the drug abuse? Now, well, hold on. Now, hold on. Now, uh, I, I'm trying to get a, I'm trying to get a buck back here. <laughs> Your sister was what would come over? No, my sister. Well, no, we all lived in the house when when we were growing up. Right. Yeah, um, so no. you, you were Dad was about, was no. out drinking sometimes. And, right. Or pretty much like absent. And, all right. And mom was working all the time. And so, so my older sister kind of watched us. She raised you. Didn't I say both of those? Didn't I say at first? And you said my answer was too vague. I said parents weren't around a lot. Yes, you said you too did. vague. You and did then say I said, that. well, Dad was an alcoholic. Right. So I'm, I'm taking right. these two bucks. Okay? And you took them both back and went with likes to party. <laughs> like I said, I was just throwing <laughs> it out there because we, we're going to get to that, though. All right. So your older sister raised you, but not, not your mom's sisters or parents. I can't hear you. That your mom, uh -huh. her sisters, or your grandparents didn't raise you? No, no. All right. Well, I'm My out. My older sister. I'm out of the running. Although I had a, had a, had a little, I should get 50 cents back. <laughs> All right. So everything's a mess. And now you're uh, picking... And uh, popping. No, did we figure out who got the bed? Uh, Drew got physical sexual abuse. By six. By six. No, I think she said eight. Oh, no, four. Four. Yeah. So we split it, Drew. No, you don't split it. Why Drew not? gets to mind. Because you took back your <laughs> your right answer. Well, I was the closest out of all three I know, of but us. picture this. Pretend we're sitting at a roulette table. <laughs> and I you move put, my you bet. You put your bet. It starts off on 16 black, and you move it to 22 red, and it lands on 16 black. What do you think you get? Half? <laughs> How dare you? All right. All right. So are you an addict yourself? No, not Have at all. I been... the opposite. No speed, mm. no cocaine, anything like Nothing. that. Uh -uh. All right. No any reason. any other hair pulling or any other compulsive activities? Um, No. You I don't, don't think so. You no. don't pull your hair, no. eyebrows? I love my hair. No. Any, any depression recently? Um, I think off and on it's, it's been around. I'm yeah, sure. With, with that kind of history, of course. Well, these finger biting, picking, these are all sort of compulsive activities. They're ways people to deal with anxiety, deal with mood disturbances. Do you do any do any cutting? No cutting. No mm -hmm. cutting. Okay. And uh, well, how about how about some? I mean, this sounds like the kind of this sounds like she needs a pill for this. Well, there are pills for this. There are pills for obsessive compulsive kinds of traits, and really, more importantly, why not get the acne treated? 
Because that's the thing that's going to be sort of potentially disfiguring and scarring. Right. And, and then that's, that's another issue where, you know, after I do it the next day, I'm, you know, my face is irritated. Yeah. Why, why not get, some, get, get that properly dealt with? There's a bunch of different treatments. Acne should be completely curable, or at least manageable this day and age. Right. Whether it's antibiotics or benzoyl peroxide, all the way up to Accutane, you should be treated. And then the, that, that issue will be taken care of. And you, if you still have the finger picking or hair pulling, then there are medications for the obsessive compulsive traits. All right, so go to a dermatologist, see about the Accutane and whatever, and clear up your skin, and then you won't have anything to pick at. Okay. And you sound remarkably, even though we were able to pick up on something happened by yeah. around the age of six, you sound remarkably put together, re resilient. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, it, you know, I've had to pretty much to raise yourself, right? To, yeah. 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 Sorry, you had to do that. And I'm be, sorry. Be careful I'm out with of the, be, be very careful with the guys you choose. You're going to pick guys just like Dad. Do not trust attraction. When right. You're, when you're attracted That's to guys. That's exactly what's going on right now. Yeah, when well, you're attracted, right. don't forget it. Listen to that little voice that goes, oh, no, here I go again. Don't do it. Right. All right. I'm going to give uh, Drew my dollar. Eric can keep his dollar. I, I, his keys. This is my I get dollar. to keep my car. Keep yeah. his car That's and his dollar for, uh, for having a, a sort of lightning flash of the right answer before he took it away. But still, still a, a very, yeah. a, a, a very really game is. effort. It was a game effort. And uh, I, I really still think that I'm owed 35 cents for the uh, raise by someone other than the uh, parents, but uh, it was not an outside family member. James? Hey, how are you guys? Hey, you're 27. What's up? Oh, I got a question for Dr. Drew. Um, I ejaculate a lot. I mean, it's a, a large quantity that comes out. And Good times. I, I, well, I've spoken to a couple of doctors about this. Um, I'm divorced. I, I have a kid. When my wife was going through her pregnancy, I even asked her OBGYN about this. The texture, what, what exactly was the question? Well, the texture of my semen, um, it seems to be almost solid, almost like a, a epoxy resin almost. Lovely. I see. And as long as it's not Elmer's a... Blue. Epoxy <laughs> resin. Yeah, paste, it's like... Paste. Almost yeah. like rubber cement. Nice. Wow. What's your diet like? Uh, it's, it's a healthy diet. Yeah. Uh, All right. What, what exactly was the question to the doctor? It's mostly yucca. Well, um, I've asked four doctors, and the last... Jesus what do you ask him? What is exactly you ask? Why do I have such a large volume of semen? No, why is it the way it is? Well... Now, the, the last doctor I spoke to said that it was prostate mucus. Yeah. Now, is that possible? I've never heard of that. Well, the prostate's what produces the secretion, basically. Right. And some people produce thicker than others. So, so it's nothing drug-related or it's not a health it's issue? Not, no. It's not that his prostate has a cold. Okay. No. Basically, that was, uh, hey, uh, nut job. I'm okay. uh, knee-deep in your old lady snatch, and uh, now you're coming <laughs> at me with the, uh, with, uh, the petrified goo question. Uh, I'm about to break for lunch here. How about cut me some slack? <laughs> I mean, basically, that's what that answer was, right? Hey, James. Yes. Uh, where did you, you know, I, I admire your candor and freedom. Okay. Uh, the, the idea that you've uh, cornered four doctors on your sperm is uh, unthinkable to me. Although I do admire it in a sort of uh, loathsome fashion. Well, I was never getting an answer. The first three doctors, I know, but the I reason, uh, but uh, the, he, you know, the reason, no all right, the reason you weren't getting an answer is because there wasn't an answer. Right. If there were a medical issue. Not because issue. they were dodging the question or they didn't know. It's like, why is my hair curly? It's just you. It's a yeah. trait. Yeah. It's a physical okay. trait. Add Dr. Drew as doctor number five who is not giving you an answer yeah. for the <laughs> viscous nature of your sperm. Please don't make it a sixth doctor who has to well, endure this pain. I've just I've spoken to this you know with friends candor you know candidly also and sure. nobody ever has had this problem that I've ever. It's talked not to. a problem. It's not a medical issue. It's right. you. Okay. Good. Drop All it. All right. And, and and but let's get back to the volume part. A lot comes out too, right? Yeah. Maybe I could probably fill half a shot glass. Really? Well, I mean, and that's good aim too. <laughs> All right. <Holy> so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it, it doesn't it, it, bother me. It, just, no, it freaks it, out my girlfriend. I understand, but the good news is it uh, rolls right off her belly, right? Yeah. And then you just bounce <laughs> it off the wall right into the <laughs> hamper. Flubber. The doing. <laughs> well, we're not throwing it against the wall or anything. Yeah, but. and then you take it the next morning. You roll it on the funny pages. It picks up the, <laughs> <laughs> the Dagwood. 
Exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, James. That's good. You pull right. it out, and if there's still a little left in there, you just yank on it, and the rest comes out, right? <laughs> it's never been that bad, no. All right, you're fine. Why, why don't you uh, drink more uh, acidic fluids? Yeah. Or uh, cranberry and pineapple juice. And Works for me. It could be a whole new, you know, line yeah. of toys for kids. Semen yeah. putty. Yeah, you're fine, buddy. Sounds good. Yeah, good times. Thanks, guys. All right. Hold on. I just got it. I got it. James, did you hang up? No, he hung up. I, I want to know where he got his freedom. That's not Where he got his license. That's not freedom. It's, it's sort of... It's grandiose. It's, it's pompous. Yeah. It, it is? Yeah. Why, Drew? Maybe he's healthy. No. Do you, but do you have to admit you, there is you, such a thing. Yes, there is. But think how you reacted to him. I was like, oh, this asshole. Yeah, but he was a nice guy. Yeah, not a bad guy. Freedom. Freedom uh, to be so... From what? Bombastic. Invasive. Yeah. I uh, mean, uh, it, it, what I mean is, is all of us, if we had a question of this nature, would right. think about it for a few minutes and then probably bite our lip sure. and he- yeah. head for the who, vending who machine, cares? right? Maybe Somebody cares about this? No. no. Yeah, I'm not going to waste a guy's time yeah. of this. And yeah. furthermore, it's a little personal yes. to be getting into it. I'm going to feel uncomfortable. They're going to feel uncomfortable. I know they're doctors. I know it's not a real medical condition. It's been going on since I was 13. Yeah. I'm not going to waste anyone's time with it. I'd be. I wouldn't bring it up. Five doctors. He's. You five are doctors. now doctor number five. And and they're not telling me the answer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So it's not the kind of guy we'd want to hang out with. When we come back, we will speak to Anna. Anna, seventeen. Dad slept with brother's wife. Brother ran off. She said, "Wants to blame. Wants to blame for it. No blame for it. Wants, wrong, no blame for it. I'm wrong sorry. show. All right. We will uh, take a break. We'll be back with Anna after this." Yay! Love line. Adam Kroll over here. Dr. Drew over there. Eric Dane is our guest tonight from Gideon's Crossing. 10 o'clock, ABC, Monday nights. All right, let's uh, get to Anna. Now, Anna, Anna's got uh, quite a situation going on over there. Anna? Yep. You're, you're 17. Yeah. Your dad slept with your brother's wife. Yeah, and they took off. Now, hold on. How old is your brother? Uh, he was probably about 20 when it happened. Wait, his brother's wife? No, 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 no. I'm confused. Was it your brother's wife or yeah. his brother's wow. wife? My brother's wife. Wow. Yes. Your brother's Quite wife. Quite down. So his girl, daughter That's what I thought. And your brother was 20 when it happened. Mm-hmm. How long ago was this? Uh, eight years ago. Okay. And they ran off together. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they, or my brother and his wife ran off. He went to Hawaii because he was stationed there in the Navy. Hold on now. Hold on. Your brother and his wife ran off together. Yes. I thought your dad slept with your brother's wife and they ran off together. No, my dad slept with my brother's wife. And my brother took his wife. And they just haven't had any contact with us. Like. Uh-huh. Right. Okay, they ran off. Uh, right. Your brother and wife. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen. Don't don't get smug when you say your brother. When you say your dad slept your brother's wife and they ran off together, I would assume it was your dad that ran did the running because he was the last guy you mentioned. No, nah, sorry. All right. So they moved off to Hawaii. Yes. And uh, now they've sort of disowned the family. Yeah. Which is uh, bad for you, but semi understandable for them. Yeah. Very understandable. I just want to want to know what I can do to make Harlan see that it wasn't my my mom, my sisters, and my fault. My fault. Yeah. It was my dad and his wife's fault. Right. I mean, you want your brother back. Yeah, Harlan's your I, brother. I do. It still hurts so bad every time I try and contact um, him. Well, what happens when you try and contact him? I usually get his wife over the internet. Yeah. And she doesn't like me very much. Why? Your sister-in-law, who now is your stepmother? <laughs> You're right. Well, I mean, she. do you think that she doesn't like you, or do you think she's embarrassed, humiliated, and doesn't want to address this whole thing? I think she's afraid, because she screamed rape, and my dad took a lie detector test. And my brother doesn't know the results of that test. He never did. So she's a piece of work. Yeah. How, how, how did the lie detector test go? Um, it came out... Um, Negative. He he didn't rape her. I see. So your dad's he's a stand-up guy. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Just, <laughs> all right. Just she's still with him, though, right? Uh, what? They're still together, and yeah. she. Okay. Well, so here's the deal, 
Anna, this this happens a lot, uh, sorry to say. It, it does. Okay, yeah, here's what's going on. You ready? Mm-hmm. I'll give you the family in a nutshell. This uh, broad over here is a piece of work. <laughs> she's, she's chaotic. Mm-hmm. She slept with your dad. She cried rape and moved off. Now, your brother, who comes from the loins of your dad... Mm-mm. Step dad. Okay, where's your real dad? Where's his real dad? Mm-mm. What's uh, my dad doing in Israel? He, where's Where's your real dad? He, my real dad is the dad that slept with his wife. I he see. He has a different dad. I it, see. Okay, where's his real dad? Um, he still talks to him. All right. Uh, do you know him? Uh, I think I've met him a couple of times. All right. Is he Is he a troubled guy? Is he a troubled guy? Yes. My brother or his dad? His dad. Uh-oh. This well, is well, always like refer. I'm out. Here's the deal, Anna. Yes. Whoever we were talking about last. No, he's you understand, like, guy. if I'm saying, Dr. Drew is good, but Jesus is even better. He works in mysterious ways. That's okay. I'm talking about Jesus at that point, <laughs> not Dr. Drew. You understand? Whoever we talked about last. No, so, he is not a troubled guy. He isn't. No. Okay, so, anyway, your 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 brother got hooked up with a <clears throat> psycho, okay? Yes. This chick's a little baddie. And her... A mm-hmm. Okay, yes, this, uh, she's, pl- she's good and baddie. Yes. You understand? Yeah, I got it. And she is scared that if she recontacts the family, the truth is going to come out about the lie detector and about the rape allegation, and she's staying as far away from the family and keeping your brother as far away from the family as possible. Now, your brother is just stupid enough to fall in love with someone like this and weak enough to fall under her spell and not stand up for himself. And I'm sorry that had to happen now here's the catch 22 you don't need to have a relationship with somebody who's this pathetic and this weak and this far in denial right i know that hurts but you're asking to have a relationship with a weak and bad person mm, he may come around someday and not, he may right now and he may but now n- now is not the time and so what you have to do Anna, is get on with your life and you two will patch it up but it won't be on your timetable and it may not be for a little while. Meanwhile, you have to go out, go to school, go off to college, have a successful life. Don't marry any screwballs. Set a good example. And eventually, he'll come back in to your life wanting to borrow money. Uh, <laughs> All right? But don't push. If he doesn't want it, he doesn't want it. Yeah. It's going to hurt you. It already is I, I know, but, but, but you can't you. obsess. Yeah. You cannot obsess on it. Yeah. I'm not obsessed. Oh. I just... Uh, well, what what do you want? He doesn't he doesn't want the relationship right now. You gotta let it go for you, now. You have to let it go for now. What what is your? Wh- he's in Hawaii. Uh, he's in Arizona now. Same place. Jesus. <laughs> what is your what is your fantasy? You're in Portland. He's in Arizona. Um, I'm going to be flying through there, and I was asking his wife if we could maybe hook up. Why do you keep talking to his wife? Why can't you talk to him? Because he's never home and on the internet. <laughs> you don't know where he works. You don't have a phone number. He's at a naval base. You can't call the naval base and ask to talk to a private uh, dipstick? I don't know the naval base. You don't know the naval base? No. You can't find out the naval... How many naval bases uh, are in yeah. Arizona, Let's by the way? find the city. Hey, Anna. Hmm? Listen, okay. I'm starting to lose my patience with you. You're you're very enterprising. Yet you don't want to do anything or take any responsibility. You can't find out where he is. He's at a naval base. You know his name. You don't know where it is. How many are there? Mm, eh, 50, 60, 70. Could be a lot. I don't know. A naval base in Arizona? <laughs> are you just screwing with us? No, I'm not screwing with you. You know what? What city is he in now? Do you know? I don't know. My my cousin has his number, but my mom told me not to. But to you just said you were going. You were flying into that city. Hmm. You said you were flying into that city in Arizona. I'm flying into Phoenix. Is okay. That where the naval base is. is? That... Flying through Arizona. Is he there? What? Is he in Arizona? Yes, he's in Arizona. Ah, so you know where he is? Yes. You said he was at a naval base. You didn't know where. I said he was at a naval base in Arizona. I don't know the city that he's at. I don't think there can be too many naval bases in Arizona. Maybe one. All right, Anna? Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, listen, honey. You're you're hurt. You're mad. You're whatever. I understand that. I don't know what's going on in your life. I'm sure it's not good. Do not put all your chips in this 
whole riddled basket called your brother. Yeah, just stay in a hotel. He's an idiot. Okay, and I know things aren't going for you good for you at home, and you're relying on him like he's some sort of fairy godfather. He ain't going to be around. you got to work on your own ass at home, all right? Things are fine at home. Yeah, I'm sure. They sound great. All right, we'll take a break. I, You know, I was told not to be so mean, but I can't stand <laughs> everyone. We'll be back. Hey, there you go. All right. Another fabulous uh, love line. I'm frustrated. Just because of that one caller. Uh, one seven-year-old puts you off. <laughs> That's it. You're done. <laughs> Good thing the show's over. All right, everybody. Uh, Gideon's Crossing, Monday nights, 10 o'clock, ABC. Let's... Uh, Let's get, let's uh, this is a good let's show. Support it, yes. Let's support it. I mean, when I say let's, I don't mean me and Drew. Of course, not. I mean you guys. Yes. We're over here. No, uh, no, it means you and Drew too. We're gonna get our. I got a TV. Come over and watch. Get the TV. TV, TV, man. Yeah, Hook the TV. TV up. Yeah, if uh, if your uh, wife wasn't so uh, hooked on those figure skating, Stephen J. Canal figure skating, uh, fried pieces of ass that he keeps <laughs> cranking out, you, she could watch him real TV instead of all that crap she watches. All right. Uh, thanks, Eric. We do uh, appreciate it. Thank you. It. Thank you. So, until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.